Of the grace of me, Son of mercy. Of the grace of me, Son of mercy. Of the grace of me, Son of mercy. Father. Blessed is our God, always now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down before God our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ God our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ our King and our God. Bless the Lord of my soul, Lord my God, you are magnified exceedingly. You clothe yourself with thanksgiving and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You are he who covers his upper chambers with water, who makes the clouds his means of approach, who walks on the wings of the winds, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He established the earth on its stable foundation that should not be moved into the ages of ages. The deep like a garment is his covering. The water shall stand upon the mountains. At your rebuke they shall flee. At the sound of your thunder they shall be afraid. The mountains rise up and the plains sink down to the place you found it for them. You set a boundary they shall not pass over. Neither shall they return to cover the earth. You are he, you are he who springs sends springs into the valley. The water shall pass between the mountains. They shall give drink to all the wild animals of the field. The wild donkeys shall quench their thirst. The birds of heaven shall dwell beside them. They shall sing from the midst of the rocks. You are he who waters the mountains from his hard places. The earth shall be satisfied with the fruit of your works. You are he who causes grass to grow for the cattle and the green plant for the service of man, to bring forth bread from the earth and wine gladdens the heart of man, to brighten his face with oil and bread strengthens man's heart. The trees of the plain shall be full of fruit, the cedars of Lebanon which you planted. There the sparrows shall make their nests, the house of the heron takes the lead among them. The high mountains are for the deer, the cliff is a refuge for the rabbits. He made the moon for seasons, and the sun knows its setting. He established darkness, and it was night, wherein all the wild animals of the forest will prowl about. The young lions roar and snatch their prey and seek their food from God. The sun arises, and they are gathered together, and they shall be put to bed in their dens. Man shall go out to his work and to his labor until evening. O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. The earth was filled with your creation. There is this great and spacious sea. The creeping things are there without number. The living things are there, both small and great. There the ships pass through. There is this dragon you formed to play therein. All things wait upon you that you may give them food in due season. When you give it to them, they shall gather it. When you open your hand, all things shall be filled with your goodness. But when you turn your face away, they shall be troubled. When you take away their breath, they shall die and return again to their dust. You shall send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be forever. The Lord shall be glad in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it tremble. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing to my God as long as I exist. May my words be pleasing to him, and I shall be glad in the Lord. May sinners cease from the earth and the lawless so as to be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The sun knows its setting. You established darkness, and it was night. O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, but not forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lux is your theos. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Our hope, O Lord, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For, for all pious and orthodox Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyterate for the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, for the President, for all those in public service, and for the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city, for every city and land, for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our all holy, pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, who would stand, for there is forgiveness with you. 
Grant peace unto your people through the prayers of your divine and venerable apostles. Only Lord, compassionate in your love for man and rescue from the terrors of those who sing your praises and who faithfully worship you, the merciful God. Petitioning, O higher rank, do speedily restore me that I may glorify your grace, which is quick to hear.
prayer, give ear to the words of my, mo of my mouth. Save me, O God, in your name. The reading is from the prophecy of Joel. Thus says the Lord, let all the nations rouse themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I shall sit to judge all the nations round about. Bring out the sickles, for the harvest is ripe. Come in and tread the grapes, for the wine press is full, the wine vats overflow, for their wickedness is multiplied. The news resounded in the valley of judgment, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of judgment. The sun and moon shall become dark, and the stars shall withdraw their light. And the Lord shall cry out, cry out from Zion, and he shall utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and earth will quake, but the Lord shall keep his people safe, and shall strengthen the sons of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, the one dwelling in Zion on my holy mountain. And then Jerusalem shall be a holy city, and no more will strangers pass through her. And it will come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drip sweetness and milk shall flow from the hills and all the brooks of Judah shall flow with water and a fountain shall flow out from the house of the Lord and it will supply water to the valley of the of the Caucasus. Egypt shall become a desolation and a dom a wilderness because of the wrongdoings against the peoples of Judah because of the innocent blood shed in their land but Judah shall be inhabited forever in Jerusalem unto generations of generations, and I shall avenge their blood and shall not let it go unpunished. The Lord shall dwell in Zion. For Kimenon mode 6, let Israel hope in the Lord. O Lord, my heart is not exalted. O Lord, keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praise and glorify is your name to the ages. Amen. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as we have set our hope in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, O Master, grant me understanding of your commandments. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your commandments. Lord, let your mercy be forever. Do not despise the works of your hands. To you is to praise, to you is to song, to you is to glory. To the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. This, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. This, o Lord. For pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. This, o Lord. For that which is good and beneficial for our souls, and for peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. This, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. This, o Lord. And let us ask for a Christian end to our life peaceful, without shame and suffering for good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask, this, o Lord. commemorating our all holy, pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life unto Christ our God. For you, O God, are good and love mankind, and to you we offer glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Peace be with you all. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. Lord our God, you inclined the heavens and descended for the salvation of humankind. Look on your servants and your inheritance, for they have bowed their heads and bent their necks to you, the awesome yet compassionate judge, not looking for human help, but awaiting your mercy and expectation of your redemption. Preserve them at all times during this evening and the impending night, from every enemy, from all opposing demonic activity, from vain thoughts and evil dreams. Blessed and glorified be the majesty of your kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The Lenten spring has come, the flower of repentance. Brethren, let us cleanse ourselves from all evil, crying out to the giver of light, glory to you, lover of men. I lifted up my eyes to you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hands of their masters, as the eyes of the maidservant look to the hands of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shall have compassion on us. The Lenten spring has come, the flower of repentance. Brethren, let us cleanse ourselves from all evil. 
crying out to the giver of life, glory to you, lover of mankind. Mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, for we are greatly filled with, your, with contempt. Our soul is greatly filled with it. We are a disgrace to those who prosper, and a contempt to the arrogant. Established in the faith, O Lord, with hope's assurance, and in soul united in the love for your cross. Your martyr saints destroy the adversary's tyranny, and they receive the crowns. And now together with bodyless hosts, they intercede on behalf of our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O noble one, and first among the saints, as the subject of laudations of the celestial orders, of the hymns of the apostles, and the writings of the prophets, O Lady, accept our supplication. Uh, Lord, Master, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, according for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the presence of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but not ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Our Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, for our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but not forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Apostoli agi, presbepsate to alei monitel, in aptes monton aptes in paras, Inanna, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A rule of faith are you, and an icon of gentleness, and a teacher of self-control. And to your thought this was evident. By truth of your life and deeds, you were humble, and therefore you acquired exalted gifts, treasure in heaven for being poor. O Father and Hierarch St. Nicholas, intercede with Christ our God and entreat him to save our souls. Now and ever into the ages of ages, amen, we have come to know that the word of the Father, Christ our God, became incarnate from you, O Virgin Theodokos, only pure, <coughs> only blessed. Therefore we never cease to extol and magnify you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Can we pray for Archbishop and Father Sava? Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our brethren, the priests, higher monks, higher deacons, and monastics, and all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God. All pious and orthodox Christians residing and visiting in this, in this city, the parishioners, the members of the parish council, the stewards and benefactors of this holy church. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy church, for all of our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep before us, who here have been piously laid to their rest, as well as the Orthodox everywhere. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bear fruit and do good works in this holy and all venerable church, for those who labor and for those who sing, for all the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are a merciful God who loves mankind, and to you we give glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom. Father, 
Blessed is he who is Christ, our God, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord our God, make firm the holy and pure faith of devout Orthodox Christians together, this holy church, this city, and Paris to the endless ages. Amen. Greater in honor than the cherubim and glory, greater beyond compare than the seraphim, you without corruption, give birth to God, the word of our truth, tell us you do we magnify. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, will now never into the ages of ages. Amen. What a mercy, what a mercy, what a mercy, Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, Bow, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, protecting the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, supplication the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner John the Baptist, the holy glorious praise for the apostle, the holy glorious triumphant martyrs of the righteous and God-bearing fathers, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of, and of all the saints, may the Lord have mercy on us and save us, for he is a good and merciful God who loves mankind. May the Holy Trinity bless, protect, and keep all of you. Please be seated just for a moment. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's, a, um, it's an interesting thing that, that I, uh, I did the... I did the wrong thing by doing an entrance tonight because it because uh, it's a it's technically a small vespers even though we have liturgy tomorrow. But the reason it's a weekly or weekday vespers is because it's we're already gearing up towards Lenten services. We're already in it. You know, when we started with Saturday the Souls uh, last week, we we were already in that place where we're like we have a foot in uh, the 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 period of the Triodion, which means we have this. Um, period where the, the service has changed, the alleluias change, all of those things change according to the tone of the week. And, and that's, it's a good thing to, to, to remind ourselves of these things. Um, weekends end up being separate. And then, of course, we don't have to do for sanctified liturgies. I don't have St. Polycarp, uh, so we're, we still have the, the Day of Judgment. Um, St. Polycarp, Polycarp is dear to me. Special, especially dear to me. He's dear to the whole church, but he's especially dear to me because I was baptized on his feast day. So whenever, whenever I remember him, I'm remembering, um, you know, the, the feast day of a person that I'm c connected to uh, by virtue of my baptism. But the service that we did tonight really had hardly anything about St. Polycarp in it. What did we hear? Who did we hear about? We heard about the apostles, right? We heard about St. Nicholas. What, where did that come from? Right? Do we know why we do? You, do we know why we're hearing about Saint the Apostles and and Saint Nicholas today? Do we know? Because it's Thursday. That's why. <laughs> because because every day of the week we know. Saturday we know. Saturday is the day that we remember the departed, leading up to Sunday where we remember the resurrection. Every day has its own theme in the church. When we when we go through the Octoikos, it's just the way it works. Monday is the Monday is the angels. Tuesday is St. John the Baptist. Uh, Wednesday, we remember Panagia. Thursday, we remember, as we just told you, the apostles and St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is really cool. I love the fact that he gets, his, he gets to be tacked on to that. He's the only one that doesn't, he's not in the Bible. <laughs> he's the only one that's not in the Bible that gets to be, that gets to be tacked in like that. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's not something that I take pride in. It's just something that I find really cool, cool that he's that universally uh, you know, celebrate. And of course, Friday, we remember the crucifixion. We remember uh, the Lord's departure. So these are things that, that are every single day. And you've probably heard it, actually. You've probably heard it whenever you get to a place in your fasting where, where um, you know, hey, I've been doing Wednesdays and Fridays forever. And your spiritual father looks at you. The next day that he adds, do you know which day it is? It's always, it should always be Monday. It's normally Monday. Why? For the angels. We fast, for, we fast for the angels. It's connected to the angels. And, it, and we do that, why? Because they're bodiless. <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're, doing in a, we're doing this in a place where we remember that bodiless stuff. So, you know, we, we have to remember how intertwined these particular saints are to our, to our everyday lives. And, and, it's a, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that those themes, no matter whether it's Lent, whether it's triodion, whether it's outside, those themes stay. Those themes stay. But there's one other interesting thing to bring up 
that, that is really cool that we're hearing from the prophecies of, of Job. Uh, Joel, I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, and th this, this, uh, these, uh, these, um, this particular prophecy is something that we are, you know, that we hear different times. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna highlight a few things just so that we're cl clear about this. Let all the nations rouse themselves, says the Lord. And, and, and I'm going to sit to judge all the nations. Bring out sickles so the harvest, harvest is ripe. Come in and tread the grapes. The wine press is full. The wine vats overflow. The, wick, the wickedness is multiplied. Um, the, uh, the, day, the, the, the news resounded in the valley of judgment. The day of the Lord is near the valley of judgment. And it talks about the sun and the moon becoming dark. The stars withdraw their light. Have we ever, do we know where else we hear these exact themes? It's in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, we hear these exact themes. You all right? Good, wonderful. <laughs> in, the, in the book of Revelation, we hear these exact themes. The wine press, the grapes that are, that are sickled by the person that comes on the cloud that, that represents Christ. First, he, re, he reaps the good people. Right? First he, he reaps the good people and they're taken because they're ripe. But then he goes and he, he reaps again with his sickle, this sharp sickle that, the, that he and the angels have, and they sickle grapes. Remember the, you know, you, the phrase, the grapes of wrath? That's where this comes from. They, they, they sickle the grapes, and, that, and the grapes are uh, poured out like blood after their tread. And all of this is being brought up now. Why? Because we're on the doorstep of great Lent. We're right on the doorstep of Great Lent. And Great Lent is a time where we need to be in repentance. It's just 40 days of reminding ourselves that we have sinned. It's 40 days of if we are saying, yeah, okay, I've sinned, I've sinned. Yeah, Father, I know, I've sinned, I've sinned. You know, and just keep repeating it over and over again. Well, you're not doing, you're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. If you're just saying, yeah, okay, I've sinned. You know, like, no, we need to seek Within our hearts, within our souls, we need to find the places, those little crevices. Why? Not just to repent from those things. It's not only to repent from those things. That's, that's the, the short version. It's because our goal in life is not just to recognize that we sin and repent so that we can be healed. That's not the goal in life. That's a stepping stone, folks. The goal in life is to be united correctly with Christ. This is why we repent. Because sin is not Christ. Sin is the exact opposite of what he is. We do this and remove sin from our life to be healed. Why? Because we want a relationship with Christ. And a relationship with Christ that has sin is not going to work. If we stop just at repenting for our sins so that we can be healed, for what? What's the motivation? Just so that we can squeeze through some door of heaven? It's not, gonna, it's not good enough. Our Christ, uh, the dignity of what he did on the cross is bigger than just to cleanse our souls for the sake of cleansing them. It's bigger. What he did on the cross, what he did for us, what we are supposed to do in return is about this beautiful and wonderful relationship we're supposed to have with our Lord, together with Him, not, not separate. It's not like me and God, right? It's not, it's not about that. It's about us. Connected to Christ for all eternity. And that can't happen while we are still sitting on ourselves saying, ah, I'm good. Giving ourselves the benefit of the doubt. We can't do that. So the church is taking this time now, right now. If you listen to the Gospels, if you've been reading the Gospels up into, they're all about Christ's crucifixion. They're all about his passion. They're all about what he did leading up to that place. And now that those Gospels are done and we're hearing from, the, from Joel, we're hearing the messages of his coming again, of his judgment. In other words, we're almost out of time. Not almost out of time to Pascha, we're almost out of time in this Triodion period leading up to Great Lent. Pretty soon we're going to be shocking our system, not just with food, but also with prayer, with fasting, with metanias, with, with everything that we need to be doing. And, we, and, and there's no time, like, you know, it's, it's like if you're in the starting block, 
and you're not ready to hear the gun go off, you're going to miss it. You don't want to miss it. So we need to be paying attention. We need to be paying attention. And these are the times to do that. And that's why I'm overjoyed, with the exception of maybe one day, overjoyed to know that, that we, the, the way this schedule just worked out, today is the first day of 12 straight days of church. I love this. This is awesome. What a great way to start. And this is not a patting on the back. No, I need it. I need it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to miss the gun going off. I don't want to miss anything, and none of us should. So this is a beautiful. This is a beautiful thing and a beautiful opportunity that we have to be reminded of our judgment. To kind of sit in that place where sin goes away, God willing, through our repentance and through Christ's healing, and where where our God willing, our fertile soil will grow the virtue that Christ desperately wants to grow within us. And it's, if it's not growing, it's, it's not on him. It's not on him. It's on us. It's on us. So let's take this time. Let's take these moments. Let's take these opportunities straight through where we can do these things together. Where we can hear, you know, starting next week with, from the great canon and great compline and all the rest of these things. Let's take these moments and use them to their fullest. Not just to do them, to say, okay, well, I did it. I can check that, check that box off. Let's open our souls, open our minds, open our hearts, and listen to what the church is giving us on these days. So, off we go. All righty. May the Lord continue to bless and guide you. Uh, tomorrow we will have the Divine Liturgy for St. Polycarp. Um, we'll hear a little bit more about him there. And, um, and may, uh, and you know, then we have Agrippina on Friday, Saturday of the Souls, and we just keep going. All righty? May the Lord continue to bless you, and may the Lord grant you the kind of enlightenment so that we can behold our own sins more fully, as the prayer of St. Ephraim tells us to. Amen.